Today on Camp Outside, we're going to review the TS30 transfer switch by GoPower. Check it out. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with Camp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. Well, I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to test out the TS30 transfer switch from GoPower. And I'm really excited about this because what this is going to allow me to do, it's going to allow me to run my cargo camper, which is my 7x14 enclosed cargo trailer that's been converted to a camper. It's going to allow that camper to run off its off-grid 12-volt battery system with a 2,000-watt inverter. It's going to allow that trailer to run off that inverter all the time until it detects shore power. And when I plug in shore power or I plug my generator into the trailer, this will automatically switch the system over to shore power or the generator and come off the battery system. So I'm super excited about this. Let's crack this thing open and take a look at it and then let's get it mounted up in the trailer and see how it works. So the first thing is, is there, you know, the box is plastic, right? But that's okay. It's designed to be mounted inside and it's got a series of knockouts so that you can, you know, install whatever you need to install in this. And then you kind of just pry the lid off and on the inside of the lid is a wiring diagram. So if you're trying to figure out how to wire this thing up, it's right inside the lid, which is nice. And then it's a really, really simple uh, construction, right? And what's nice about it is, is it has these wire connects already attached to it. So all you've got to do is run your wire into the box, put a little, you know, wire holder. I forget what they call those things, but you know, what the thing that, you know, screws in. And then, you know, put your bare wire in the end and clamp it down and you're connected. So really, really simple connection for this. And to show you how to hook this up, guys, we'll go ahead and refer to this. So up top here, these are two, your, your breaker panel in the trailer. These two on the side are two, your shore power or generator. And then these two on the bottom are going to be for my inverter. So normally they're gonna run off my inverter and then when it detects power from shore power, my generator, it's going to transfer over. It's like a 30 second delay, I think is the uh, time delay is 20 to 45 seconds. And then it will switch over and then it'll feed the panel with the shore power or generator power instead of the inverter. So really, really simple. And then over here is ground, right? So really, really simple. Should be, should be easy to hook up. So again, these top ones go to my panel. These middle ones go to uh, the shore power and these bottom ones go to my inverter. Really, really simple. Let's get it mounted up in the trailer. All right, guys, I got everything installed in the trailer now. We're ready to test the transfer switch. So let me show you what I've got going on. So this is the main panel for the trailer and it has shore power coming into it. And then off that panel are two breakers that will not go through the transfer switch. One is the rooftop air conditioner. My inverter is not big enough to run my rooftop air. And the second one is an outlet for the AC to DC charger for the battery system. I do not want my AC charger to run off the inverter because that just creates a loop where we're using batteries to charge batteries. That's not going to work. So those top two breakers are those two breakers. And then this bottom breaker here is the breaker to the transfer switch, right? So that runs to the transfer switch so that when shore power is detected, the transfer switch over here will detect that shore power and switch over to shore power. The rest of the time, the transfer switch is set to run off the inverter. So the inverter comes in on this bottom line and runs into the transfer switch and that's what the trailer runs off as default, okay? It's a 2000 watt Renogy inverter Guys, I've got some videos coming out on this whole 12 volt off grid system as well as uh, how to install a Renogy inverter into a panel system like we have here and run it off a transfer switch. So if you want to check that out, be sure to subscribe. And basically guys, what we have then is the transfer switch feeds this sub panel, this one right here, and powers the rest of the trailer, powers the lights, the outlets, the dorm refrigerator, the microwave. I think that's about it. I think that's all I have in here. Uh, so 
It's uh, it's it's five circuits. Well, it will be five total circuits once I have the exterior outlet installed, but I don't have that in yet. So it's just uh, right now it's four circuits, but that feeds the trailer. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set things up so that you can see the power transfer and we'll go from there. Okay, so here is a live view of my battery shunt monitoring the system. And what it's showing is that most stuff is off in the trailer right now. I don't have any lights running. The refrigerator hasn't kicked on. We're receiving about 37 watts of input power from the solar panels. It's kind of early morning and the sun's not overhead yet and there's a lot of trees where I'm at. So we're not going to get uh, a lot of power from the solar. When I plug in the trailer though, what you're going to see is immediately you're going to see the power coming in increase. That's because it immediately will turn on the battery charger, right? So you'll see that immediately. And then in about 20 to 40 seconds, it will switch over to shore power. And so you should see this number increase again. So let's go ahead and try it. I've got to step out of the trailer to plug it in. I'm going to leave the camera running and we'll take a look at the change. All right, so immediately, guys, you see that the current has gone up to 32 amps. That is the charger and the uh, solar panels combined. And then if you heard that click, that is the transfer switch switching over to shore power. So when I turn on lights in here, we should not see any current drop. If we were running on battery, we would see a current drop. So here I'm going to turn on a light right? And nothing changed, right? You can see the reflection of the light in the iPad. Nothing changed. We are running off of shore power. The trailer is running off of shore power. That sub panel is running off of shore power. Now I'm going to go unplug shore power and you can watch how this change will cause this number to go down, the amount of current to go down because we will start running that light off the battery. Okay, so you can see that that number drastically decreased. That's for a number of reasons. Number one is when we killed the shore power, we killed the 30 amp battery charger, but the solar is still coming in. So I'm gonna turn the light off now because the light is running on battery and we will see that current number go up. So there you could see, you know, that was about an amp worth of current to run that light. So with it off, we are putting into the system about three amps with the solar, turn the light on, and the light is consuming about an amp of power. So it's basically using the three amps of current we're getting from the, from the solar, using an amp of that, and then two amps is going into the battery. That's how the transfer switch works. So I am super excited about this because this works great. If I want to use the generator, which is on the front of the trailer in that box to power my trailer, or I'm plugging into shore power, which goes in right there, I can use the transfer switch to switch everything over to shore power the generator so that I get maximum charge out of the batteries, right? Because if I didn't do it this way, Right, if I ran everything off the batteries all the time and then just plugged in my battery charger, then the majority of my battery charger power would be going to run the trailer, not charge the batteries. This way, everything can run offshore power or the generator, and I still get a full 30 amp charge into the batteries, right? Which is the fastest way to charge your batteries. So by running a main panel, 
a transfer switch, and then a sub panel, you are optimizing how you use your shore power, or your generator power, and how to ma and and you maximize your battery charging. So I love this setup. I love this transfer switch. I'm super excited. It was very very easy to install, guys. Anyone can do this, but if you are uncomfortable doing electrical work, I recommend that you either hire an electrician to consult on the project or to wire it for you. But guys, I think you can do it. But hey, don't take my word for it. Trust yourself, right? If you are a DIYer and you're good at figuring stuff out, this is pretty easy. But again, if you're uncomfortable, guys, don't mess with electrical. Hire a professional. Guys, if you have any questions about the TS30 transfer switch from GoPower, drop some in the comments below and I'd love to hear from you. I am not an electrician, I am not an expert, so there might be some things that I cannot answer, but if I can, I will certainly give it a go. And if I can't, I'll tell you I can't. If you have any questions or comments uh, about the transfer switch or how you run it in your setup, I'd love to hear that too. So drop some in the comments below or you can connect with us on our other social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and X or our website at KempOutside.com. Guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. We exist to help moms and dads take their kids camping, hiking, fishing, learn about nature, and develop a conservation ethic. We wanna help you get you and your kids outside. One of the things that has been painfully aware to us is our need for off-grid power, especially when we're traveling long distances and are gone for long periods of time. Life doesn't stop, we need to work, uh, we need to pay the bills, we need internet, we need all these things. So having some off-grid power capability is really, really, really nice. And if you're doing a build like this, YouTube videos can be really, really helpful to help you figure out how to lay out your system, how to install it, and how to operate it properly. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that little bell that notifies you when we release new videos. I have a video coming out of the complete build from start to finish. So be sure to, to check that out. It's gonna be a long video, but it's gonna show you step-by-step step how we installed everything we installed. So big video, uh, I'm still in the production phase because obviously this isn't done. You can see the trailer's a complete mess. I am leaving for my summer trip in six days. So I've really got to pump this thing out but stay tuned for some videos coming out uh, on all of this stuff. If you like this stuff, make sure that you camp out with us right here at Camp Outside. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you outside.